Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. How are you this morning? God bless you this morning. Hope everyone had a great weekend. We're back at it again. Um, give me a few minutes. I'm going to tag a few people. Just hope you guys had a great weekend this weekend. It was a beautiful weekend. The weather was really, really great. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. It was really wonderful. I actually had a great weekend. Did I get any rest? No, absolutely not. There's no rest. When God has you... God, when God calls you, you know, it, it's really hard to, to rest because he's constantly, constantly you doing something, you're helping someone, you're, you're being pulled and it's a blessing. I'm not going to complain because it's a blessing because I could be in a hospital somewhere, but I'm not. So I'm definitely not going to complain about that. God is a good God. I hope you guys had a great, great, great weekend. So now we're back, we're back, and uh, we're going to talk about the spirit of jealousy, but then uh, God is going to, uh, he gave me some, some new things to do, and I'm going to go ahead and follow his leading, amen? I hope you guys, okay, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Yami. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Yami, Evangelist Cynthia. God bless you guys. God bless you. Share the broadcast for those that need to uh, to hear some of the things that God has to say today. Um, we're going to finish talking about uh, the spirit of jealousy and then... Uh, I'm going to go on to some other things that God has given me. God has um, also um, given me some scriptures on, on Deuteronomy 28 for the blessings of God. So we are going to get into some, some of the blessings of God. And we're also going to find out, we're going to speak on fear. We're going to talk about the spirit of fear. And we're also going to speak on when God, uh, how do you know when God is telling you no? Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, bless, Leah. Uh, yes, you can, uh, but let me um, get started. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you this morning. We bless you, God. We magnify you, God. We thank you for everything that you're doing and everything that you're going to do this morning, God. We just magnify you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for each and every person that's here. We thank you, Father God, for their their uh, willingness to even want to come and even listen and learn, Father God. We just thank you for that as well, God. I just thank you this morning, Father, that we just woke up in our right mind, Father God, that we're not laying in our, our in our deathbed and we're not in a hospital, Father God, but you have mercy on us and we're here. We're here, Father God, and we thank you for that. We thank, we got to be thankful for the fact that we are not in a hospital. There's so many in a hospital. But we just bless you this morning, God. Father, creating us a clean heart, renewed and right spirit within us, oh God. And Father God, I just thank you right now for what you're doing, what you're going to do, how you're going to bless us. This, this is a new month. We thank you, God, for this new month. We prophesy, we decree this month is going to be an excellent month of blessings, favor. Father God, I pray that the finances are going to come in for the north, the south, the east, and the west. We thank you, Father God, for the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, Father God, because you have me speak on that, Father God, and that's going to start tomorrow. I'm going to uh, go through that. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do. 
Um, Lawrence, get it up about the truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the preparation of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You guys know I always have to put that armor on. We have to use, uh, put the armor on and I, I, I make that a daily thing to put the armor of God on. Hallelujah, God. We just thank you. Thank you for protecting us today, Father God. And now what I'm going to do is cancel spoken words. You know, you guys, I speak this every day. I'm going to start sharing this stuff on my page. I know I know that I told you guys that I was going to do it. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to start putting these on my Real Talk page so you guys can go in and, and use it as well. So we're going to read Limitations 3, 37, Numbers 23 and 8. The blood of Jesus washes and make us whole. Our maker and our father have mercy on us and deliver us from every satanic pronouncement. Our God and our father arrest and paralyze every evil tongue that rises against us. Holy Ghost fire locate us and paralyze every tongue pulling us down. Holy Ghost fire paralyze every evil word programmed into the sun, moon, and the stars to limit our destiny. Holy Ghost fire paralyze every witchcraft word issued to reduce our lives Every word, Father God, spoken over our lives, over our heads, over anything, Father God, our children, our families, Father God, we will never make, it will never make it in life. We'll never make it in life, receive fire and be canceled. Every word by any man or woman that has spoke against us will never make good in life, receive fire and be canceled. We cancel every word, every word spoken by any of our relatives to keep us in one place, receiving fire, break and scatter every evil word issued against us in the light in the night and to the light limit our lives, receive fire and be canceled. Every word, evil word spoken or issue in the day to limit us to receive anything from the Lord fire break and be canceled every curse issued against us by our mother and our father receive fire break and be released in the name of jesus right now god bless you uh michael richard god bless you jeffrey foster god bless you god bless you hello holy ghost fire break and scatter every word limiting us from our place of birth our, we release ourselves from every evil issued against us from our father's house, whosoever that is renewing evil word against us day and night, receive stones of fire and be exposed and be wiped away. Every witchcraft pronouncement made against us and our destinies receive fire scattered to pieces. Every will call it decree raised to pull us down, scatter and be canceled. O oh Lord, our father raise, arise and let your plan be your word stand in our life. Every word spoken by the strong man of our father's house against us, our life, break and be canceled. Every evil word that is limiting us, your time is over, receive fire and be canceled. That they that wage war against us are greatness. Holy Ghost fire, blood of Jesus, pull them down. Blood of Jesus paralyze every word spoken against us by the spirit of the water spirit. Every word spoken and sealed with any blood against our destiny. Receive fire and break and scatter every secret word in embar embargo, tying us down, break and scatter to pieces. Holy Ghost fire, locate and wipe away any personality, personality curses, curses us day and night. If if fire, I fire back to senders every evil word decision raised against us. Blood of Jesus, cancel every word or written to stand against our lives. Oh, Lord, our father, open up our great doors and restore our glory this morning. Restore our glory, Lord. Hallelujah. By the power of the Lord, we reposition ourselves for excellence, our maker, our father. We write every statement concerning our destiny, prophecy, prophesy and speak good words to yourself. Make sure that every day you speak good things to yourself. Good morning. God bless you, Thomas Green. Good morning, Apostle Robert. Good morning, Judith. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. To your glory, O oh Lord, we must come who created us. So we must speak good things over ourselves each and every morning. Prophesy good things to ourselves. We're not, we're, we're the child of God. So God is going to bless us no matter what. Everything that God does is to bless us. We are blessed. We're blessed going in. We're blessed going out. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. And I'm going to get into that because God said, after we go through this jealousy thing, we're going to deal with fear. And then we're going to deal with the blessings of God because God is going to bless us. He's going to bless us. He is going to bless us. 
So I'm going to continue on. I'm going to read one more thing. I know I noticed that every time I come in here and I read these scriptures on witchcraft, the enemy doesn't like it. But it's okay. He doesn't have to. We're going to speak it anyway. We're going to speak it anyway. Witchcraft manipulation on our finances. Die in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft manipulation on our investments. Die in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft on our businesses. Die in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft manipulating on our career. Die in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft manipulation on our marriage. Die in the name of Jesus. Manipulation on our children. Die in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft padlock hanging against us. Lock your owner in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft engagement over our success. Break in the name of Jesus. Every ancestral witchcraft claim over our lives break in the name of Jesus. We destroy power of stagnation and limitation in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we cut down every tree of failure in our family line in the name of Jesus because we're victorious. We're not failures. We're victorious. We destroy every pin of witchcraft in our family. Every witchcraft covenant working against our lives be broken in Jesus' name. Every witchcraft register bearing our names catch fire in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft document written against us be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft informant that is observing our destiny be paralyzed in the name of Jesus. Those are familiar spirits. Those are monitoring spirits that come to monitors. They monitor us and then they go back and, and, and tell Satan what, what he sees. Every image graven against us, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft authority over our destiny, break in the name of Jesus. Every tree planted against us, our freedom, catch fire in the name of Jesus. Every satanic roadblock against us, our family, clear away by fire in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft conclusion inside of our body, melt away in the name of Jesus. I clear off every visible web over our lives in the name of Jesus. Arise in your anger tonight and pursue our pursuers, Father, in the name of Jesus. Every plot of tragedy prepared against us, break in the name of Jesus. Every foundation of witchcraft in our family, break in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the food of every witchcraft power assigned against us become their poison in Jesus' name. Sit Every set of witchcraft working against us receive the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Communication systems of witchcraft be disturbed and destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let the throne of witchcraft assigned against us be dismantled, be destroyed in, in Jesus' name. The stronghold of witchcraft assigned against us catch fire and be roasted in the name of Jesus. Let the refuge of witchcraft assigned against us be roasted by fire in the name of Jesus. Let the network of witchcraft be dis, dis and graded and scattered in the name of Jesus. Let the intermediaries of witchcraft powers assigned against us be roasted in Jesus name. Let the transportation system of witchcraft assigned against us catch fire and die. Weapon of witchcraft assigned against us turn against them and destroy them in Jesus name. Let the banks and the storehouses of witchcraft assigned against us catch fire in Jesus name. Every altar of witchcraft assigned against us permanently confusion let let them receive permanent confusion in Jesus name every padlock of witchcraft assigned against us be dismantled by the fire in Jesus name let the trap net snare tying us down to one spot be broken in the name of Jesus being stagnated every project of witch be consumed by four in the name of Jesus Pray, we pray against the spirit of burial. We can pray against the spirit of witchcraft bewitchment. We pray against witch, uh, witchcraft summings. Blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire come upon our hands in the name of Jesus. Identification marks of witchcraft. Hear the word of the Lord and backfire in Jesus name. Our father expose the human beings that are working with Satan to trouble our lives. Any power drawing blood, vomit it and, and die in Jesus name. Any power that has tasted our blood will not stop vomiting until they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord. Blood of Jesus cause confusion in the stomach of witchcraft assignment against us. The power of witchcraft monitoring assigned against our lives in the name of Jesus. It is written that there will be no peace for witchcraft because the Bible says there shall be no peace for the wicked. Automatic spiritual cage break in Jesus name. Automatic spiritual assignment against our ministries break in Jesus name. Automatic spiritual cage assigned against our marriage break in the name of Jesus. Automatic spiritual cage against our carrier break in the name of Jesus. Automatic assignment against our investments break in the name of Jesus. Automatic cage assigned against our home break in the name of Jesus. Automatic assignment against our children, our grandchildren break in the name of Jesus. Let the night of birds of witchcraft be massacred, massacred by the angels of the living God. 
street junction witchcraft manipulating against our lives die in Jesus name. We overthrow every kingdom of witchcraft over our lives in Jesus' name. Witchcraft from the place of birth, militing against our life, die in Jesus' name. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for these prayers over our lives this morning. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're going to do. I'm just going to finish the jealousy. Most of us already know we're talking about the spirit of jealousy, what it'll do. Um... Matter of fact, yesterday I heard a preacher and he said the same thing. Jealousy. People are jealous of the calling on your life. People are jealous to see where you're going. They 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 want to destroy you because they see the light on you. They see the light. So because they see the light, they want to destroy you. Got to be careful with those type of people. God is jealous over us. His jealousy is righteousness, je zealous and protects his children. Scriptures that confirm his jealousy over us. Exodus 20 and 5, Exodus 34 and 14, Deuteronomy 4 and 24, 5 and 9, 6 and 15, Joshua 24 and 19, 1 Kings 14, 22, Ezekiel 8 and 3. Where the lamb goes is where our heart needs to be. God desires fellowship with Jesus said, I call you friends, not servants. Eternal husbands forever. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Idolatry, anything is themed by the, about God. Jealousy can lead us to turn away from true devotion to God. Deuteronomy 23, 16 and 19, they provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods, with abominations, and they provoked him to anger. 1 Kings 14 and 22, now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins. And they all built them high places and images. How does jealousy come in? Comes as an emotional wound because you have not been preferred. The spirit of jealousy says they don't they don't care about me or they care about they no, if they cared about me, they will have recognized me. Jealousy will make you be in disagreement with everything or your spouse says or everything with another person. Jealousy is working to mess up your worth. Problem being that we have never seen that the our worth actually comes from God. The spirit of jealousy will rise up within us when a wound is presented and we are looking for worth in other places rather than the Lord. So we got to, as soon as we get wounded or we feel something, we need to just get rid of it right away. Because if we don't get rid of it, what's going to happen is it's going to fester and then it's going to just cause a lot of problems. We need to get rid of it right away. That that's 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 a that's a just like forgiveness. We just got to get rid of it. We just got to get rid of it. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. The scripture of jealousy. I'm, I'm sorry. The spirit of jealousy is not from a fiery dart of the enemy or betrayal. It's like a puncture wound, and it takes a long time to heal. So that's not a, even a spirit. It says the spirit of jealousy is not from a fiery dart of the enemy. It's not even from the enemy. Or a betrayal. It is like a puncture wound and it takes a long time to heal. A cut heals quickly, but a puncture wound takes much longer. Wow. It's extremely susceptible to other demons that come in as companions. Usually comes out of dis disloyalty, broken trust, or betrayal. You know, some of us been through that. The puncture comes because you feel like someone has been disloyal to you, broken a trust, or betrayed. The voice says, I thought I could trust that person. Envy attacks our emotions to bind us up and make us ineffective for the Lord. Scripture picture of envy and jealousy operates in Psalms 73, 1-28. It keeps us from walking in wisdom. James 3, 14 and 17. But if you, you have bitter envy and strive in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not above, from above, but it is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiential and without hypocrite, a hip, hypocrisy. Envy and jealous are multiple facet. 
Perfectionism is jealousy. Ask yourself these questions. Is anyone jealous of who I am? Of course they are. Is anyone jealous of what I'm doing? Of course they are. Is anyone intimidated by my gifting? Of course they are. Because there's going to be people like that. Do I have vain imaginations about people? Well, I don't, but if somebody do, they need to straighten that out. Must deal with every area of fear in your personal lives and ask the Lord to help us be transparent. We must be transparent. How does envy and jealousy operate when we have fear due to insecurity in our lives that we are going to be displaced, whether real or imaginative? It does not matter. It operates the same way. Fear opens the door to judgmental, critical spirit. Once that is locked into our hearts, we begin to judge the situation and or person. Then the door is open to suspicion and imagination. Next, we begin to watchfully guard our lives, which brings a uh, separation, which creates tension and distrust. Now we are in the pr progression to jealousy, rage, underlining spirit of principality and bitterness. Unforgiveness is operating down in our lives, which can harden our hearts. The prodigal son, brother, jealous of the prodigal son, turned on him. Now the unforgiveness has entered into our, our lives, and we will begin to be manipulated situation in people, which opens the door to witchcraft, occult spirits. At this point, we have become one with jealousy, and the spirit of death has legally ground in our lives. My God. We cannot resist this spirit. We have to be delivered according to Luke 4 and 18. Can I let that spirit in? Let that spirit in. We got to be delivered from it. For us to be set free, we must repent and allow judgment in our hearts to break, forgive, and then begin to speak words of blessings over the situation, people, and ourselves. Allow the love of the Lord to come and Heal the deep wound and release all the pain to him that he took on the cross. Isaiah 53. Is there any healthy, good envy, jealousy? Yes, godly jealousy. There is good and good and envy, jealousy, but it's godly jealousy. Second Corinthians 11 and 2. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have exposed you no, I, I have espoused you to one husband, one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. God created us uniquely and special. We are all special to him. Psalms 139 and 14, for I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works in that my soul knoweth right well. Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 8, for thou art a holy per propel unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chastened thee to be a special people unto him about all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chosen, no chose you, because ye were more in a number than nay. For ye were the fewest of all people, but because the love, the Lord loved you, my God, a longing for peace, healthiness can be a pure, good side of envy, appreciation of identification of whom someone and they have. Jealousy will bind you from operating in your anointing and gifted. It will keep you from being used, released, or having ministry opportunities. Being jealous of somebody elevating faster than you, we, we should not do that. Uh, God knows God going to choose who he wants. Some of us didn't even choose ourselves. John 11, 1 and 44, Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he have been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said, I am not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe Thou shouldest see the glory of the Lord. If you believe God, you're going to see the glory of the Lord. He told her to go move the rock and she said he's going to stink. And the Lord said, just do what I tell you to do. So basically God is saying, just do it. Just do what I tell you to do. Stones means taking away the stumble block, the midstone that caused him death. 
When someone is jealous of us to bring, uh, brings a millstone around, around our neck and put a stumbling block in our way of fulfilling our call and ultimate death comes in some area of our lives. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violence take it by, back by force. Meaning we are believers. We must suffer even to death, but the violent Holy One take back what the enemy has stolen from them by force. So we take back everything he has stolen from us. The enemy hates for us to be a friend of God. What can save us from the spirit of jealousy? What can we do to protect ourselves from the spirit of jealousy and envy? We need to be established a threefold cord. Iron shopping iron. A threefold cord of truth with yourself, someone else, and the Lord. Begin to honor those around you by speaking out what you see in the in their character, gifting anointing in the, the fruit of their lives. Psalms 84 and 11. For God is for the Lord is a sum in the shield. The Lord will give you grace and glory. No good thing will we withhold from us that walk uprightly before him. So let's allow him to protect us and shield us. Amen. That's on jealousy. We're gonna go to something else. We spoke on jealousy. We asked God to protect us from jealousy. Um, what does God say when he says no? What does God mean when he says no? Do we do we know when he tell us no? And what does God say about you? What does God say about us? What does he say about us? I say... I am unlovable, but God says I am forever loved. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears or today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God, of God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing all creation will never be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that's Romans 8, 38 and 39. What does God say about you? I say or have said, I am scared, but God says I am healed. I'm scarred, but God says I am healed. But he who has pierced for your, your transgressions, he was crushed. For our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53 and 5. We're healed by the stripes of Jesus. I say I am weak, but God says he makes us strong. God arms me with strength, and he makes me my way perfect. Psalms 1832. I recognize I am a sinner, but God says I am forgiven. I am writing to you who are God's children because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. 1 John 2 and 12. These are the things that God is saying about us. I was, I was abandoned, but God says I am adopted. Has anyone ever been abandoned by their families, by their friends? God decided and God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it came from, it came, it gave him great pleasure in Ephesians 1 and 5. I say I am broken, but God says he makes me whole. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Colossians 2 and 10. I have been rejected, but God says I am his. Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summed you. You are mine. God says we are his. We belong to him. Isaiah 43 and 1. I say I am alone. But God says he is always with us. Anybody ever feels alone? Know that God does. He's always with you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to leave you. He's always there with you. And the scripture says that. He's never going to leave us. He's always with us. My God, thank you, Jesus, for that. I say I am hopeless, but God says because of him, I am hopeful. We have hope. We have hope with God. We have hope. Hallelujah. We have hope with Jesus. 
My God, we thank you this morning for hope. I say I'm purposeless. But God says I have created, you was created with purpose. Perhaps this is the moment for which you've been created. Esther 4 and 14. I say I have failed. But God says I am victorious in Christ. But 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 thank God he gives us victory over sin, death through our Lord Jesus Christ. And as 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, I say I am lost. But God says he has given me direction. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. If we hear, if we listen, God is talking to us. He's always talking to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you right now, Father God. I say I am worried. How many of us worried and be anxious or afraid when something happens? But God says with him, I am, I am peace filled. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it. Do I give to you? Let your heart be, let not your heart be troubled. Neither be it be afraid. John 14 and 27. I say I am unhappy, but God says I am joy. I am joyful, joy filled. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. John 15 and 11. I say I am afraid, but God says I am powerful, loved, and have a sound mind. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and then a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you this day for that. He's given us a sound mind, you guys. A sound mind. A sound mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I say I am nothing special. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderfully, and I know that I that that full well. Psalms 139 and 14. I say I am worthless. But God says Jesus died because I am worth it. He says we're worth it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting love and eternal life perish but have eternal life john 3 and 16 these are what this is what god says we are we got to believe him we got to believe him and everything was backed up with scripture so he says this is who you are when you're feeling hopeless he said no you have hope you have hope you have hope in god you have hope hallelujah you do have you have hope in god you have hope my God, he's a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God says no to you, okay? When God says no to you, how can you know Psalms 32, 8, and 11? How can you know what God is saying to you? I've talked about, uh, we, we, and, and, and previous, uh, when God's telling you no, how do you take that? Basically, how do you take that when God is saying no? Because sometimes the Holy Spirit will say no. He'll tell you no. In circumstances in your life, he'd be like, no, no, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to go there. If you have to force to make it happen, these are these are, are some of the things that will happen when God says no. If you have to force it to happen, this problem means God is saying no. I believe in the principle that most things that are truly valuable will not be easy to obtain and maintain. Marriage, for example, requires a lot of work, a lot of hard work and effort. So it will be unbiblical to say that if you ever have an issue in dating, that is a sign God is telling you to break up. 
But I do not believe that there is a difference between overcoming obstacles in life through hard work that the Holy Spirit is empowering you to do do and compare to forcing your will to happen because you are unwilling to accept God's no to you. One difference between overcoming a trial in life through faith comparing to forcing your own will is that when you are being led by God to overcome a trial in your life, the hard work you are putting in will help you your relationship with God rather than hurt it. When you are when you are being forced into something to happen, our efforts will pull us away from God and and harder. We will try to make this certain ha thing happen that we really want to happen as Psalms 32, 8 and 1 states. I mean, I'm sorry, 32, 32, 8 and 11 states. We instruct you to teach you in the way that you should go. Counsel you a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and brittle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast surrounds us and the one who trusts in the Lord, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you rightful in heart. We're being led by God. God is always leading us and guiding us. But we have to be willing to follow him and not to resist his will like an, an animal who won't listen unless they are forced to obey by oppressing, oppressive means. God does not want us to pin, pin us down and force us to do something he wants us to follow him willingly and joyfully one way you can know if you are truly following god you will feel surrounding by his steadfast love one another way you know if you are forcing your own will is when sorrow are increasing in your heart because you, when you are truly following god he surrounds you with your love when there's sorrow you pretty much are fighting against god Summary, God is, God is saying no, when the only way forward would be to force your own will to be happening and you, and you will know if you are forcing your own rather than overcoming a trial in your life by how your efforts are affecting your relationship with God. If your hard work to accomplish this thing you want is pulling away from God rather than enhancing your relationship with the Lord, this is a sign you are forcing it. So we cannot force things. If God says no, he has a perfect timing for everything and we cannot force him. It's going to bring sorrow in our lives. It's going to bring sorrow in our lives and we're going to be, we're going to go through some things we do not want to go through. So we got to, we got to be mindful. We got to be mindful of, of, of what God is saying. We got to be mindful. We have to be mindful. Thank you, Jesus. We really do. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you this morning. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah. As Christians, no, if you are stretching the word of God to make it say what you want it to say, God is saying no. If you change the word of God to what you want it to say, then God is not telling you to do that. As a Christian, we know that God has spoken through uh, his word and therefore we must obey what the Bible says because our consciences would convict us if we were to disobey a blunt command in the Bible just so we would get what we want in life. Sometimes Christians are tempted to twist and manipulate the word of God to try and make it say something that is obviously does not say. Come on now, we cannot. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot say those things. My God, my God, Jesus. And we know people do that. They do, they, they, they change the word of God to get what they want. They'll say, oh yeah, uh, God, God, God said, I got a good heart. God, God will forgive me. If, if I go and do this, if I go get a drink, if I go do that, God's going to forgive me. But, but seriously, if God, if, if God is not pleased with some things that he's telling you no, and you're still doing it, then. That's something you're going to have to deal with. For example, if someone really wants to have premarital sex, they have to be tempted to try to twist and distort what the Bible says so they can, can put their own conscience at ease 
that it really is okay to have sex outside of marriage. And we know that's not okay. Or if they do not want to resist culture norms and they fear being seen as judgmental or closed minded, they may try to twist what the word of God says regarding sins that are clearly commanded in the Bible. Second Timothy four, three and four states for the time will come when people will not, will put, will not put up with the sound doctrine. We in that time right now. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their are itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. To myths. Jesus. Oftentimes, people don't want to just deny the word of God. Rather, they want to feel like they are obeying the word of God. So they find false teachers false doctrines to tell them what they want to hear. So if you need to bend and twist the word of God to make it say something it does not say to get the yes, you really want you really want from God, this is a sign is actually saying no. My God, Jesus, we got to know. We got to know this because when God is saying no, he's saying no for a reason. And we cannot force his hands. We cannot force his hands. We got to just trust him and believe him. If you are denying, oftentimes people want, uh, okay, I already read that. If you are denying your own con conscience and attempt to hear a yes, God is probably saying no. Certainly, there are parts of scriptures that are notoriously more difficult and to interpret such as the books of Daniel or Revelation. When it comes to sins mentioned in the Bible, however, the meaning of the text is usually very simple and straightforward. So the easiest way to know if God is giving you a no is to figure out if there is a sin involved. If there is sin involved, God is saying no. If there is anything sinful about your request, obviously God is saying no. He's saying, no, 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 no. He does not want us to do that. So we can't not do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Certainly there are parts. Okay, well, sometimes, however, there comes moral decisions that are not quite as clear in the Bible. And besides moral decisions, many times we are faced with morally neutral choices that are not a matter of sin but rather a matter of conscience for simple it is not a sin to buy a new car but what if you are struggling to figure out if you personally should buy a car perhaps you are unsure how nice of a car you should buy i know we struggle with this sometimes we do if your car if if the car you have now is really it's really a, okay, is, is really in need of being replaced. Come on now, is your car really be in need of being replaced? Or if God is leading you to use that money or something else. It is moments like these where God will often lay a conviction on your heart to give us clarity. It will not be in, in, uh, be in normal to buy a new car. Immoral. If you have the money and you make a wise purchase, God can, God could be leading you to do this. Or God could be telling you to be content with what you have and save the money for something else. When you are faced with a personal choice like this, we won't always find a direct Bible verse to tell us what to do. And no other person can tell you which is the right thing or wrong choice for the personal. So when you are faced with morally neutral decisions like these, you have to obey the personal leading of the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes the Holy Spirit will speak through you, your conscience. And if you have to deny your own conscience to do something, this is usually means that God is telling you no. He's telling you no, don't do it. Because if you do it, and then it doesn't come out the way you want it to, it's going to be a problem. So we don't want to, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that at all. We do not want to do that. Amen.
We don't want to do it. So um, I want to decree um, some blessings over us this morning um, before we go. Because, okay, I'm going to decree this, this over us this morning. Because I believe God wants us to be blessed. That's what God wants. He wants us blessed. God truly loves you with an everlasting, unconditional love. He really does. 1 John 4 and 8 teaches that God is love. Love is person that he created you, his image and likeness. Filled with love. Everyone needs love because we were created for him by love. When mankind fell into sin, we became separate from God. Separated from perfect love. As a result, we experienced guilt, shame, fear, and condemnation. But this was never God's intention or desire for us. We walked away from perfect love. Through Christ, we have been restored to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16, even though we turn our, our ears, our hearts against him, he never abandoned us. He never stopped loving us. Instead, he put a plan into place that will restore us back to him, to love. God's plan was brilliant. He knew that he did not have the ability to make our wrongs right. This is how much God loved us. He owned such an enormous debt because of our sins that it was impossible for us to pay it. We couldn't even pay it. My God, we couldn't even pay it. Jesus Christ came as a man. So God decided to become man and pay the debt in full. Jesus Christ came as a man and obeyed and fulfilled all the laws and commandments on our behalf. He never sinned. He was perfect. He then chose to observe all of mankind's sins as he hung on the cross. Jesus. He died and paid the penalty for all of our sins and transgressions. He actually became sin. In exchange, he gave us his righteousness. What an extraordinary gift. In order to receive this love that we will never weaken, fade, or diminish, we simply receive him into our life as our Savior and Lord by faith. He did all the work and restored us to God to restore us to love. All we have to do is believe. That's all he wants us to do is believe. The love is not based on your ability to obey his commandments, your, your behavior, or your performance. It is based on his unconditional love for you. So even if you disobey God, he's still going to love you the same. He's never going to change the way he loves you. You're going to be loved the same way. God bless you, Elizabeth. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you, Valencia. God bless you this morning. I pray God's peace and blessings over you guys this morning. Cedric, God bless you. This love is not based on ability to obey his commandments or your behavior or your performance. That is love, you guys. It is based on his unconditional love for you, for us. We will always love. He will always love you no matter what you do. You are his dear child. You are his beloved. You are his precious one and always will be. When you receive and understand his great and glorious love, then it is easy to love him and return with all your heart, mind, and strength. See how great a love of the Father is bestowed on us that we will be called children of God and such we are. 1 John 3 and 1. Decrees. I am love with the everlasting love with loving kindness God has drawn to me Himself. I bask 
in his love and nothing whatsoever will ever separate me from the love of his poured upon me. His, his, his God, his love that poured, that pours upon me. God's love for me never fails. It is richly and forgiving, so gently and kind. God's love is over me, is a banner that gives us covering and victory, leading in the way we should go. God is really, I don't know, today he just want to let us know how much he loves us. Because that, that's he wants us to know he loves us so much. God is love over me is a banner. You know what a banner is? That gives me covering and victory leading me in the way I should go. I, I, I follow after him because he do, draws me with his intimate love. I have been called to know his riches, love that surpasses knowledge to I am filled with his fullness. I truly am the object of his deepest love and affection. Because of his love for me, I will never perish, but will have everlasting life with him. The love of God dwells up within me like flat, fresh rain from above and overflows me and with perf uh, perfect peace. The Lord pours his unfailing love upon me daily. As a result, I am able to love others freely. And these scriptures and the scripture, the decrees that I, um, that I just read are from Jeremiah 31 and 3, 1 John 30. 3 and 1, Romans 38, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 38, 39, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7 and 8, Song of Solomon 1, 2 to, 2 to 4, 2 to 4, Ephesians 3, 18 through 20, John 3, 16, Psalms 42 and 8, and Luke 6, 35. Be still for a few moments and the Savior, the love that God has for you. Meditate on his kindness and tender mercies that he constantly blesses you with. Listen for him to speak to your heart as he speaks into your thoughts how much he loves you. How much he loves you. And every day this week, I'm going to um, continue to do these um, declarations over us for the next month. Because God wants us to know how much he loves us and he loves us dearly. He loves us dearly. Amen. I bless you guys and I thank you guys for being on here um, today. I'm just going to um, pray uh, against the spirit of jealousy so we can have a blessed day and be freely today. Father God, we, uh, Heavenly Father, we give thanks and praise and we bless, we bless to be among those sanctified in Christ Jesus. We call to be saints together with all those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for grace, peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Prayer to bind the spirit of jealousy. Wonderful counsel. We bind the spirit of jealousy that's attempt to consume our life. We curse it out completely in the name of Jesus for it is for them cruelty and overwhelming fury. Remove it now, mighty God, along with the hatred, anger, fear, and insecurities that fuel it in Jesus mighty name uh, James 3 and 16 for where is jealousy and selfish ambition exists here uh, there will be disorder in every vow practice prayer to um, free from jealousy thoughts everlasting father we desire to be as holy as you are set us free of the thoughts that consume our mind which causes this jealousy to arise subsume in negativity and cruelty within the heart with your peace and love and gentle kindness Proverbs 14.30, a uh, tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Proverbs 27 and 4, wrath is cure, cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Lord, our emotions have a major part to play in this, this display in our actions. We ask today that you help us to control them as they arise. Anger, hate, jealousy, malice, pride will be replaced by your warm and comfort, love, peace, tranquility, compassion as we step into today. Execute acts of kindness towards one another. James 4, 2 and 3, you desire and do not have so you murder, you covenant and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You can have these things. All you have to do is ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongfully to spend it on your on your own passions. Hallelujah. If you're asking God for something, 
Is it for yourself? Is it for your selfish gain or is it to help somebody else? Prince of Peace, help those who are struggling today. May they experience your love and show love and return to all they come into contact with. Help us to not be envious towards our neighbors and friends, but rather to be happy for them and encourage them to go even further. Cleanse us from anything that breaks our hearts, O oh Savior. Anything. Help us to live a righteous life, Heavenly Father, because on this day I declare and decree and speak into our lives in Jesus' mighty name. James 3, 14 and 15. But if you have bitterness, bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes from the from above, but it's earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Galatians 5, 19 and 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sexual idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Amen. I bless you guys this morning. I hope you guys got something out of... um. Uh, out of what was taught today, we're going to get into the blessings of the Lord because God does want to bless us, but he also wants us to understand. He wants us to understand. So we thank God for everything. Hallelujah. We just thank God for everything that he's doing. I pray that you guys be blessed today. I pray that God will continue to bless you this month. I pray that this month will be the most blessed month. You know, I am, I, I, I what I'm going to say to you guys, you can prophesy to your month. You can speak to March and you tell March what you want it to be. you speak to it. What do you want March to do for you? What do you want to decree? You speak to March. And this is a this is something that we don't understand that we can speak things into to existence. Speak to, to March and speak to March and tell March, this is what I want for March. And, and don't allow the enemy, excuse me, don't allow the enemy to come in and try to put stuff in there. You you tell March what you want. What do you want for March? You want to be blessed, you want to be victorious, you want to go through all your, your tests and you want to make it through your tests. God bless you, uh, Michael. You you speak to, to, to the month of March. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He's Jehovah Jireh. The month of March is going to be blessed. The month of March is going to bring prosperity. The month of March is going to catapult us to the next level. There will be no disasters. There will be no, 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 no sorrow in the month of March. There will be no sorrow. There will be joy, happiness, and peace in the month of March. We will prosper in the month of March. Hallelujah. Speak to March. Speak to it. Tell it what you want. Everything that the enemy has, the enemy has stolen, we want it back in March. When you catch a thief, he got to give it back 70 times, 70 times, 70. So is, did he steal anything from you? Reach back and say, devil, I want it back. I want my family back. I want my family healed. I want my family set free. If you don't speak it from your mouth, it's probably not going to happen. I can speak it because I'm speaking it for myself, but you have to open your mouth and begin to tell March what you want. Speak to March. And I promise you, God's going to, going to do it. Speak to March and believe what you say. Don't, don't say it and forget and, and, and don't believe. Speak it, believe it and receive it. Amen. And then when uh, 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 April comes, we're going to speak to April too. Speak to your month. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for being here this morning. We're going to get into the blessings of the Lord. You guys get ready because it's really, really good. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and it add no sorrow. And God wants to bless us. He wants to bless us and pour his love upon us. So we're getting ready to get into Deuteronomy 28. And it's going to be good, you guys. It's going to be really good. Amen. Okay, God bless you guys, and we also going to talk a little bit about fear, but we'll do that tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow at 8. God bless you. God bless you. Make sure that when you come on here, share the broadcast. There's many, many, many others that need to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a good day.